In this video, we're going to prove a theorem. And the theorem is, the theorem is that if x and y are even, then x plus y is even. That's our theorem. Now the first thing we want to do is be sure we're very clear about what we're given and what we're trying to prove. So what we're given here is that x and y are even. And what we are trying to prove, or I like to write it this way, we want to show that x plus y is even. Now the first thing we might ask ourselves is what do we mean by even? And that's where it's going to be helpful to have a definition of even. And our definition is that x is even if, oops, if and only if there exists a k, which is an element of z, z is the integers, such that 2k is equal to x. Now here's where we need to be very careful. We have an x in our definition, and we have an x in our given. So here's the x in our definition, and here's the x in our given. And they are not necessarily the same x. In fact, they are not the same x. So in order for us to not get confused between this x and this x, it will be helpful for us to rewrite the definition. And we can rewrite the definition using any letters we want as long as the letters stay in the same places. So we can write, for example, a is even if and only if there exists, and now we can again use a different letter. Instead of k, we'll use b. We use a b in the integers such that 2b equals a. So you see here we've just substituted b in place of k everywhere the, that it appears and a in place of x everywhere that it appears. So we're just going to put a line through that to show that we're not using that definition. We're using this alternative one instead. Now that we have our definition, we can go back and we can restate what we're trying to show and we're going to restate what we're trying to show in terms of that definition. What we want to show is that, and here we're going to show that x plus y is even, x plus y is even, i.e. that there exists, now again we're going to use a different letter, uh, let's try the letter C this time, there exists a letter C, an element of z such that 2c is equal to x plus y. That is what we're trying to show. Uh, one more thing that we need to know is what can we use? In this proof, we will use uh, only basic rules of algebra. We're going to use the closure property of the integers with respect to addition and multiplication and we're going to use the definition of even and that's it. We're not going to use anything else uh, and using only those only, only those tools we can show that x plus y is even. So here's how we set it up. Step one, we're simply going to restate our given. X is even and Y is even. And for our justification, we're just going to write that that is given. So we'll put our justifications here in parentheses. Step two, we're going to restate this in terms of our definition. And again, we need to be careful. Um, here, A is even if and only if there exists a B in Z such that 2B is equal to A. If we want to apply that to X, we need to use a different letter over here as well. So we'll say that X is, well, because X is even, what we're going to write is that there exists, and we'll choose another letter of the alphabet, let's use D, which is an integer. There exists D element of Z, 
such that 2D is equal to X and there exists. Now here again we have to use another letter. We'll use E which is an element of Z such that 2 times E is equal to Y. And our justification for that step is going to be the definition of even. Now, notice that if I use the, the letter D here for X, I need to use a different letter when I apply that definition to Y. Otherwise, I would be implying that these two are the same integer, and that is not necessarily the case. So as an example of this, suppose that X and Y are 4 and let's just say 10. Then what is this number D where 2D is equal to X? Well clearly that number D is going to be 2. And down here this number that such that 2E is equal to Y, that number E is going to be 5. So clearly if I pick two arbitrary even numbers, like 4 and 10, it's not the case that this number that I multiply by 2 to get either X or Y, it's not the case that these have to be the same number. In fact, they will never be the same number unless X and Y themselves are the same number. So it's important that I choose different variables for D here and E here. Very important point. So um, let's move on with our proof now. Okay, continuing our proof with step three. Since 2D is equal to X and 2E is equal to Y, then X plus Y is equal to 2D plus 2E. And that is basic algebra. That's the principle called substitution. You can substitute in, if 2D is equal to X, then you can substitute in for X the value 2D, and if 2 is equal, E is equal to Y, you can substitute in for Y the value 2E. So now we have that X plus Y is equal to 2D plus 2E, which we can rewrite as 2 times D plus E. And that, again, is basic algebra. We're factoring out a 2 there. Out a 2. And then finally, the last step, we're pretty much now ready to show that uh, we've proven the theorem. D plus E is an element of the integers. That's true because the integers are closed under addition. So since D is an integer, we saw that that was true up here. D is an integer right there, and E is an integer right there then clearly D plus E is an integer. So step six, we have shown that there exists a C. You can just recopy that from up there. There exists a C in Z such that 2C is equal to E X plus Y. That C is D plus E. Uh, and we're done. QED. So the idea here is that at every step we need to be able to justify how we got from the previous step to the next step, from this step to this step, from step 3 to step 4, from step 4 to step 5, step 5 to step 6, using only what we were given to work with. And in this case um, we decided we we're going to use the basic rules of algebra, the closure property of integers with respect to addition and multiplication, and the definition of what we mean by even. Uh, so that is uh, how we do a simple proof. I uh, hope that this was helpful, and thanks for watching.